the, the YouTube is broadcasting. So <laughs> shut that guy up. <laughs> well, I'm really excited though, that, uh, that we're here, um, here today for an, another QB power hour, Michelle and I are, are going to be joined by, uh, by some folks from, from Webgility, um, talking about e-commerce and, and simplifying the e-commerce accounting uh, with some owner of long for success. I've been a speaker and a trainer for Intuit since 2007. So quite a long time. And I started teaching QuickBooks back in 1999. So I love um, having you guys all joining us today. If you're interested in learning more about QuickBooks or starting your own practice, check out some of my books. Those are available on Amazon. There's the links to the Facebook group. As always, we'd love to have you join us there to continue the conversation. And that's enough about me, Dan. Let's hear about you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my name is Dan DeLong. I am an owner and founder of Dan With, where we transform businesses through technology. And one of those ways is uh, with Webgility. So I'm really glad that they're, they're here to talk about uh, what, what, they, what they can do for you. Uh, formerly of, of Intuit, uh, worked there for about uh, 18 years in the technical support training, uh, technical writer, uh, really proficient in all things, uh, all things in the Intuit ecosystem. Um, and my new project is a new partner and chief content creator at uh, school bookkeeping, school of bookkeeping.com. Uh, so a few details about the QB power hour, a little housekeeping, uh, of course, remember to keep your questions in the Q and a rather than pull them into the, the Q and a portion of that. And then we can broadcast out those questions or answer them live on the webinar. Uh, so today, of course, we're going to be talking about simplifying accounting and e-commerce. Uh, in uh, July, we'll have a QBO advanced case studies with a roundtable panel discussion with some of the industry leaders uh, in in the in the legal uh, the legal industry. So uh, you'll have uh, we'll actually have come in and, and talk about some of the accounting uh, nuances of that, and then we'll have the QBO roadmap for uh, the emails that come out. So to make sure that those links are, are included. So if they're not, please let us know, uh, but you can also access prior recordings and the podcast as well. So let's get into uh, some of the things that we wanna talk about. Now, we, uh, we, we did have a couple niche nuances in the past that really kind of talk about this, this idea in general, the, 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 the nuances of that industry that make it very challenging. And uh, one of the things I was listening to it uh, yesterday, and and one of the things is about e-commerce in general that really kind of strikes strikes me is it's uh, it's it's the large things that we uh, in in the industry tend to shy away from that really make this a complicated um, industry to to really find a, a niche in. So she had she had a great great talk about that. Way. And then you know, we had, go ahead. You know, I was just going to say, Dan, you know, one of the great things, like you said, this is being so it is very worthwhile to listen to, to that one, as well as this one here with Will English, if you want to yeah, update them on yeah, this so, one. So, um, so Veronica really focuses in the, the QBO space of where, where the accounting is, is going to lie. And then Will, he came on and talked about the nuances of retail. Um, and, and he really focuses on QuickBooks point of sale. Uh, so it really could depend on what what product you really want to uh, you really want to work with the most, and then kind of build build your practice around that, um, so that you you provide the best solution based on what you're most familiar with. So we have the the replay about that as well. And then Michelle, you wanted to talk a little bit about. Uh, of Lara as well. Yes, yes. I want I wanted to remind affecting these businesses more and more of these small businesses if they weren't selling online previously they are now or they're trying to now or they've moved to that and stuff and especially what will happen is they'll try to do it on their own and then they realize how complex it really is and you know my shipping app is not talking with my uh, e-commerce app and this is none of this is talking with quickbooks and am i tracking sales tax properly and it's just made everything much more complex when all they want to do is sell their goods, right? And so more than ever, there's a lot of opportunities out there for us. One thing I did want to mention, as Dan was talking about previous webinars that we've done with the QB Power Hour, Avalara sponsored one at the end of March, the variety of sales tax laws, because there's city, state, and local. So there's just innumerable sales tax laws. Eight, 
you have to collect sales tax for that state. So I think it was like a hundred thousand dollars or you have 200 sales. So if you're an online retailer and you have over 200 individual sales to a particular state, you now are live. And so I really encourage you to watch it as well, because this is a great area. Those three webinars that we've mentioned are great kind of additional resources that I, I would encourage all of you to check out. Yeah, that's a, a great ad there because uh, sales tax is one of those things that you 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 don't want to m drop the ball on. Um, right. And, and well, one of the things that he talked about during that is like you could actually have, uh, you know, you're not even in that state. Well, and so one more thing on this, because it is such a critical area. So like you said, the address and the house can be different, but also like a Hershey's candy bar is considered candy and it's taxed at one rate. Scares me to death because I, you didn't collect sales tax. You owe all these back taxes. Who are they going to come to? Who are they going to point the finger at? They're going to come after me. I don't want that liability and that responsibility. And if anybody wants to see how bad it can get, just Google. It was, I think, Oregon, either Oregon or Washington state business. And so it is a real <laughs> on the webinar. <laughs> like, oh Caution on the sales tax. Forget it. <laughs> well, that's where the. So let's launch the first uh, first of poll questions. What version of QuickBooks are you using? Uh, so let me go ahead and launch that. Because you know we talked about you know Veronica, she focuses mostly on on QuickBooks Online and and will. So it's a great place to to set up and like, it doesn't matter what bird the Intuit ecosystem or a client comes to you and say, well, I have QuickBooks point of sale. Okay. Well, you can still use uh, something like WebGility because it doesn't matter. It will go right. to it. Well, and Dan, what I love too is, is regardless of what the client's using, because that's usually what happens is they're already using something and now they've started selling on Amazon. They've started selling on, you know, e-commerce sites and, and they may have gotten a shopping cart and they may have a shipping app and they have all these incongruent pieces and none of them are talking together. And that's where I love WebGility coming in and bringing it all together and streamlining that flow. And I love keeping the details out of QuickBooks and just posting that summary data. So I'm really thrilled to have WebGility sharing this stuff with us today. Yeah. Well, not Indeed. at the same time, probably. <laughs> but... <laughs> yes, so hello everyone. My name is Colin Cates. I'm a senior product manager here at WebGility. Uh, I've been working at WebGility for about closing in on six years now. Uh, but I've been working with e-commerce businesses and uh, the retail industry and folks on QuickBooks for close to 10 years now. Hey everyone. Um, so I've been with WebGility since last year and I came here to start the, the partner program um, and really just kind of finalize a quality training program to get people on board with WebGility. Uh, I have about a decade of partner management experience. So we have a second poll question for you to follow up on that QuickBooks question, which uh, more of those clients have begun selling online. Um, you know, there's there's kind of a couple different possibilities there. So let's just see what you guys have seen. You know, just survive, you know, if they can't, <laughs> if they got to have their doors closed or, um, you know, can't have people in inside, um, how do they, how, how have they uh, survived and, 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 uh, change during this during complex with all these changes because these businesses are pivoting i need different revenue streams i need to think of different ways to get my goods to my customers and so i think more of them are starting to sell online or do the pickups or whatever but they are changing this as a necessity and as part of that it's making their accounting needs more complex and i like i said earlier this is just a great opportunity for us right now to be able to help these clients totally yeah yeah potential client is selling can vary uh, it's pretty spread across the board <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean almost a dead even split now new technologies make my business more efficient is, is that uh it's exactly what you know we're hoping to Heard of WebGility before. Uh, we are the number one automation software for e-commerce for sellers on QuickBooks. Um, you can find, you can see uh, some of our partners kind of listed there with G2 Crowd and uh, Shopify and Magento. Um, so you'll find uh, lots of uh, reviews and things like that about our 
our software there, but uh, we connect to a large amount of, of different connections for over 5,000 customers. Uh, and we've been partner partnered with Intuit. We do work. Uh, so the, the process of connecting Webgility, like we've been talking about here, is really to bring in all the excels at is connecting to things like Shopify and Amazon stamps.com for shipment processing. You can see, you know, a couple of the examples here, we connect to really over hundreds of things all with the same purpose of aggregating and pulling in that data into sort of a unified source so that that data can be translated into QuickBooks with ease and, and through automation rather than kind of uh, painstaking detail that it would otherwise take. And Colin, I love that slide because, yeah. you know, a lot of times we talk about tech stack, you mm -hmm. know, creates the connection. And I just think it's so much smoother and streamlined and I think it's less problems. I mean, you don't have issues with apps not, not working well together like we used to with desktop. Um, we don't have that when we're, look, we're working with these online apps and this tech yeah. stack here. I love that image to kind of show how it all does then connect to QuickBooks. Yeah, it's a very yes. good way to articulate it because like you said, I mean, these things just fat, they flat out don't connect, at least not in the way that you would need to in order to really get that information across. And then, you know, when you start to think about just like, uh, you know, we have listed on there UPS stamps and FedEx. Those are all examples of different shipping providers, but they each do things a little bit different. So when you go and, you know, look for their information, it's not, you know, when you're going and doing it yourself, it's not exactly right in front of your face to go and pull all of that information, even though you're just looking at shipping fees from different shipping providers. Um, so that's, yeah, that's definitely what uh, I, I'm glad that this articulates that that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and and one go one ahead. of the other things is that as a, as a, an e-commerce, you know, somebody gets into e-commerce and they want to choose other, other channels like ET or uh, or Amazon, uh, they they can still do that and not have to now change their 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 re overhaul their system totally uh, because Web Agility will do will handle that. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And furthermore, kind of adding on to that on the next slide here, you'll see. So you know, today I'd like to focus in our demo on primarily sort of the e-commerce accounting aspect and the automation of that. Uh, but you can see here that uh, our product does really offer a lot more capability within itself and a business that's moving online if they have inventory that sometimes is in smaller quantities uh, as far as availability, making sure that that inventory stays in sync with whatever sales channel. here. So uh, WebGility Online version 6 is our latest version of our online product. And I have it right here in the background. I think you guys can see that now. Yes. Uh, so with uh, WebGility, actually, let me back out here to the connection screen to connect your accounting system and at least one of your first sales channels. So you can see on uh, this is again on the on the online product on one of our lighter plans. We have a, a several sets of of plans that escalate in our accounting system. Those sales channels, potentially the payment providers or payment uh, uh, sources for those sales channels, as well as your shipping providers, uh, ShipStation or Shipping Easy. If I click here, you'll see those. Uh, which ShipStation and Shipping Easy are aggregators, just like Webgility, that can also pro they basically only process shipments though, or they're focused on the processing of the refund and fee data that happens directly on the sales channel when customers are placing orders. So that's and kind of how we get all of that data. And Colin, if there's a sales channel that somebody's using that they don't see listed, is that something that they can contact you to see if you all can create that integration? Like somebody mentioned in the chat that, you know, they sell um, farm, they have a farm and they sell at farmer's markets. And she said there's, there's few solutions where farm focused software integrates with QBO. Mm. Is that something where you all may be able to create a, uh, an integration? Definitely. Yeah. And at least at the very least, even if we can't create a direct integration, direct integrations to these different sales channel platforms do take sometimes quite a long time to build out depending on what we're talking about there. But there's definitely a deck on our desktop uh, platform or as you kind of graduate up through the more complex plans, uh, we do have the capability of doing phone orders for thing that can be sort of injected into WebGility 
under a set of maps so that you don't have to adjust that over and over again, but that you'd be able to constantly sort of just re-upload a spreadsheet and let that spreadsheet uh, filter into Webgility or into QuickBooks as sales receipts, invoices, or potentially a journal entry. Yeah. So you could set up, you could set up that integration kind of how it's going to ultimately land in QuickBooks and then just bring that into a, into Webgility so that it feeds into it. Is that right? Exactly. And let's actually look at that now in a example of, of something that is already sort of flowing into Webgility. Um, so we'll come back. We'll actually come back to this screen here. I know the text is probably a little bit small for some of you on your screens. Um, but what we're looking at here is the ability under our accounting switch section to actually switch between journal entry posting versus transactional posting. Um, so journal entry posting is all of all individual transactions. Um, so just looking at the journal entry setup, so, sort of recording, if you were to manually record a journal entry for this client or this company, uh, you would go in. And so what Webgility is doing with all of that sales channel data is aggregating it for you. And Agility will summarize specifically all of the product charges that are being uh, put together from a, uh, a particular set of orders or refunds or fees and put all of those product charges into a single uh, line item to that account uh, to build that journal entry. So this process of mapping these accounts here within Webgility allows Webgility to aggregate and map all of the order data and sales data that's coming online before pushing that into QuickBooks into these accounts. And so Colin, I think it's important here to point out and, and just make sure people realize so here we're we're posting just summary totals in QuickBooks. We're not keeping inventory in QuickBooks. We're not recording customers in QuickBooks. We're not keeping that detail in there. Exactly. We're just getting we're just getting the general ledger totals. When we want reports, we're going to go over to Webgility and we can look at inventory and we can look at sales by product. So we're just posting a total here, but we can get the reports and the details. What are our most profitable items? Not tracking it in QuickBooks. And mm -hmm. I think it's great because it just keeps it a lot cleaner. So Absolutely. thanks for. Thanks for sharing this. I think this is helpful. Totally. Yeah. And thanks for, for kind of adding that there because yes, that is exactly right. As far as the sort of the, the summary of simplicity there is true. Um, and you can see, so uh, if I jump over to the, the second section of sort of the configuration here for journals, most important part outside of those initial account online stores is that orders travel through there at an incredibly fast rate potentially and through different payment providers and payments processor here, which is reading orders that came from shop. We'll talk about momentarily, but I have that actual Shopify payment processor here. And so essentially just to, you know, uh, sort of, uh, drill yourself back out for a moment to a higher level and imagine that payment method that is on the order. So for example, you can see at the very bottom here, what I've done is these are actual payment methods that are coming in from the online store. Um, you know, some of them maybe never get used if you don't have wholesale customers like net 30, but all of your real payment uh, methods that are used, even like a, a credit card like American Express or Visa, with my payment processors, and Webgility will take all of the orders that have other uh, unconnected payment processors that are not actually going through Webgility. However, due to their payment uh, method that the order will have, we are still able to separate them into different payment processors. So for example, I have Shopify payments here, and I have Shopify payments connected to Webgility as well. When the orders for Shopify come into Webgility and are posted because of this payment processor, we will also be able to post the payment fees that came in at the time of, of the, uh, the order being placed. For the other payment processors, maybe you have a payment processor that doesn't connect to Webgility, um, like Braintree, or you know, there's there's a million different payment processors out there. So we connect to a lot of them, but there's just too many of them to connect to all of them. So even if you have a payment processor that doesn't connect to Webgility, you can actually add. That's uh, you can see I've added a bunch of them here, um, but you can actually add new payment processors here to Webgility group those payment methods into that processor and what it will here is one entry with all of your revenue from Braintree and here's so important because people can spend so much time in this area trying to reconcile and trying to figure you know how to set these things up and stuff. um and 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 our questions are exploding as well so you know that's now the new new normal for yeah um you know ordering out at least it was for for a period of time 
Does that integrate? Or many of those businesses are probably uh, that retail or um, or restaurant store is probably using something like Square potentially. Um, and so Square, for example, is actually one of our connections that can be added as a sales channel, which seems a little weird because, well, it is a, it's a POS system. So you're selling through it in your store information directly in. Um, now with desktop, you know, there's still the, the option that if to provide that export. Yeah. Gotcha. And then, um, you know, now what you're showing here is you had mentioned it's, it's more detail oriented. Um, what you're showing here may not do what what they're asking it to do, but you may sure, have sure. a solution to be able to do that. Um, and one of the questions of your online uh, sales channel. Yeah, very good question. So this, and like you said, it, to the point of what we're sort of uh, looking at here with journal entries and the way that we're posting these on like uh, this light plan, this is essentially a one-way sync where everything that's coming in is coming from that sales channel and going into QuickBooks. But we absolutely have lots of capability with two-way syncs in certain areas at more elevated plans. So for example, right. I can even switch them. You'd be able, right. so if I, when I'm on transactional posting, I can go to my product catalog. And here's right. where, like I mentioned in the intro slides, if I have my items matched up here, uh, those can actually have their inventory synced back and forth. So there's some things like that. Uh, on desktop, we can actually do product list as a product on the online store. Right. So just like... Just like QuickBooks Online at Simple Start Essentials, yeah. you know, plus and advanced, you know, you really want to get an understanding of what it is that your client needs. And then the same thing with Webgility is a light pro and I'm probably butchering the, the so those are right though, actually. Those are the first two. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I just uh, I just stepped in that. Um, you know, that that may be require QuickBooks online that you can synchronize to. Uh, or do you need a specific version of QuickBooks Online in order to uh, to do that synchronization? So very uh, good. Still forget the names of the QuickBooks plan. So I may make some mistakes there too. But uh, the easy way to imagine it is that yes, we we connect to every. That's why I'm forgetting right now which plans exactly. But the very low end plans I think don't even include expense tracking still in QuickBooks Online. So for example, if you connect that version with Webgility, you'd still be able to post things that are related to revenue. It's just, we won't be able to post any expenses because you don't even have expense accounts. <laughs> I, I, Colin, I hate to say this, but I think you're confusing that with maybe, I think it was Wave that allowed you to do sales and invoicing only. Because sim QBO, oh, okay. Simple, yeah. QBO Simple Start does allow you to track your income and your expenses and stuff. But oh, okay. it doesn't allow you to have things like accounts receivable or accounts payable. Ah, it doesn't ah. like, I mean, you don't even have an actual general ledger report. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's tracking the stuff in the background, but it is very limited and you can only have one user. So, you yeah, know, yeah. it is it is very, very limited. So I, I don't think I- To be there, yeah. Right. right. Channel, like selling out of their store versus their, uh, versus their e-commerce, or if they add more, online channels they want to know how each one's doing and they can do that with classes that you can't do in simple start or, or essentials speaking of which uh and i'm happy to answer any more questions but i was just going to use that as a segue to the next sort of section here which is the optional uh settings section of the journal entry which does allow you to assign exactly that uh classes as well as uh sort of as an alternate you could assign a customer some people like to do customer tracking for that um, but typically yes i would recommend class tracking uh to be able to classify that entire journal under a sales channel awesome all right so yeah let me we'll save a few more questions for me okay. when we right. <laughs> have we'll another we all are kind of on the same page about how that data is getting aggregated and put together first and now let's actually kind of jump back and look at the orders and that data itself as it gets synced to quickbooks um so if i jump over you can see i clicked on the accounting section here where it's going to have these settlements orders and refunds so settlements is something that's only going to show up uh when you're using journal entries because that's the terminology that that we're using to talk about these groups of journals that we're creating out of the orders and refunds and fees that you see there. So the settlements page is going to be the area where you're actually able to sync these journal entries. And you can see uh, I have mine configured to go on a weekly basis right now. And what's happened here is there's three of them for this week because it's actually automatically already separated out those batches uh, for my uh, payment processor mappings that I've done there. 
So, uh, and I can also, uh, before we actually post those, so like I said, this is going to be a group uh, of orders and refunds, all of the transactions processed from this Shopify store for that period of time. Um, and if you go over here to your orders and your uh, refunds tab, sort of something that Dan and Michelle both mentioned uh, earlier is that despite the uh, the simplification of data and uh, summary that we're posting into QuickBooks to make that very simplistic and easy to manage, all of the original data is still sitting within Webgility. And so you can go investigate individual order details. You can investigate individual refunds. If I click open an order here, I'm not sure if I've really processed too many actual payments on this store. So yeah, there's not really too much great data on this particular order, um, but you can see there's uh, all of the details of an order that from your store are going to show up here. Mine's a little bit scant because of being a, probably one here with that. And I'd like to order go. one of those ThinkPads for ten dollars. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah don't want a few items in this order, and we have some uh, shipping income for the seller shipping that was paid by the customer uh, and then some taxes that were collected and even a discount that was applied. So you can see all of those granular gritty details are in there. In Absolutely. That. Yes. So the, and the profit. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I got, I got hung up on Brad Hall. I used to work with him at Intuit. So maybe oh, yeah. the, I wonder if he's the same person. <laughs> Yeah, we do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, sort of random naming in our in our test stores <laughs> that we do. <laughs> uh, so now if I look here at what happens. So all three were synced there. You can see they've jumped over to my completed tab, which now journals on a daily basis, a weekly basis. And later we are going to release a monthly basis. Right now it's just weekly and daily. Um, so there's those new batches of, of transactions that I've posted as a journal. The one thing I wanted to touch on here before leave that journal or make that journal entry until that period has been closed. So this period not closed area here will show you essentially the preview of the journal that we're going to create for tomorrow. These are all of the orders that have been placed today. And um, But as soon as that day is complete, then it will show up in that pending tab and it's able to be posted here as a complete journal entry. So if I jump over to QuickBooks, whoops, and go to my journal here, let's go to this one was the first one I created there. So here's one of those end results. Um, this one I actually had going to undeposited funds. I collected my, uh, I had happened to map the payment processor fees to cost of goods sold. So you'd probably have a, a more specific payment processor account here for that. Um, but you can see sort of the line items that we've aggregated into here and the descriptions that are provided by those, uh, those aggregations that are made there. The other thing to keep in mind here is obviously it's only posting what data was because they weren't included on my particular batch of orders. So for example, um, one of the categories that we're able to map, uh, as far as accounting goes is the, uh, customer redemptions area, which you can look at as like the usage of gift cards or gift certificates or store credit, right? Um, this journal entry doesn't have any area on it for customer redemptions. That's just because nobody used any gift cards during this particular period. But if it did, or if they did, there would be a line item entry here for that. Can you do um, different income, revenue, expenses by the different sales channels? Because um, I wasn't quite sure yes. I, I didn't see, catch that. No, no, good. Yeah, and, and good observation or, or good call out. We didn't, I didn't really branch too much into the multi channel aspect of this, but you're exactly right. So, up here in the top right, you can see the store drop down area. And each of these configurations is highly unique, at least within its, within its own nature of being able to be configured separately, like you said. So uh, yeah. the, the actual ability to configure this is going to look exactly the same as Shopify. But just like you said, if I want Magento to be recorded totally separately to an entirely separate set of accounts, I can absolutely do that. Yeah. And I saw are, the... you able, are you able to um, know from looking at, at at Webgility, what journal entry that is over in familiar, but these transaction numbers here are the actual journal numbers there. So that's um, if I look at uh, numbers here, yeah. So okay. now, Colin, I, I, thought, 
Go ahead. QuickBooks so you can see the profitability of these different shopping channels. And wouldn't that help you to determine whether, you know, you want to keep previously just for reporting purposes. The question, can you track inventory using a summary journal entry as well? Good question. So the the simple answer is right now in WebGility, we haven't enabled any way to do that, like to do a, a, a cost tracking um, for that inventory. The main reason is I think, you know, some people are familiar with it on uh, Shopify, for example, and probably Amazon as well, um, where you're able to track that product cost. And the unfortunate part about that, and one of the reasons we've held off on that aspect of it from WebGility is that no online store, you know, we're, we've been talking about orders and refunds and things like that. Orders and refunds are things that all handle that cost tracking is so varied and different from store to store that we don't want to create one system that only works for Shopify, for example, right? Um, so the that's the cost tracking aspect of it for the journal entry anyway, we've left out of the equation at this point until we're able to put a more unified system in there. Uh, now with transactional accounting, that's something to, to keep in mind with transactional. Transactional accounting is a little bit more difficult sometimes to reconcile depending on the number of transactions that are being processed and the uh, the payment processors and things like that. But if a sectional accounting, at which point you're dealing with all of that cost tracking just by entering those uh, those bill of materials into uh, into QuickBooks. And as WebGility is taking those sales out, we'll be removing the correct items, product cost there, some kind of, of manual inventory summary. Yeah. That makes sense. I'll let you get back to your slides because I know you got some more great information. So we'll hold some of the questions until the very end for you. Sure. And, and yeah, that was that's good timing because uh, I wanted to switch back now and uh, get my whoops. We can always jump back later for questions into the uh, into the demo or, you know, if I if I need to show you guys something, I can always kind of pull that back up if I can. Um, but just moving on. So that's kind of the summary of the the journal entry posting there. Uh, this is a, a sort of a brand new feature for the uh, WebGility Online 6.0 uh, version there. Um, so we definitely are excited to have people get in there and start playing around with it more. Um, but yeah, I'd like to uh, pass it over. To I'll take over from you. Now. It's of the program, are of course, going to be accessing the product for your customers, um, but really being able to help leverage our expertise. We know that e-commerce for a lot of customers is really new, and our team is made up of people that have been working in e-commerce for decades. Um, we also, of course, can help bring in some additional revenue to your business right now um, in the form of recurring revenue. And I'm going to dive into that a little bit more in just a minute. No, just kidding. I gotta go this, go do, do it this way. <laughs> do with you. This the training is going to cover our training. You get one of these beautiful badges, um, as well as an assigned channel sales executive. So you have a sales partner on our team and listing on the WebGility Certified Partner page. I know that Colin touched on a number of the integrations that we work with already. Um, we work with all of the big players, but we do have kind of touched on our Light and Pro plan today. We also have a very robust downloadable software version that is advanced and premium. Your customers also get a great experience when they sign up with WebGility. Um, you, your customers will get white glove implementation when they sign up for their desktop product. Everyone gets a dedicated customer success manager, how to run their business properly. And we set up those expectations from the beginning and continue it. We have also, of course, have an amazing support team. Uh, you can see some pictures of them here and they're available Monday through Friday, seven to 6 p.m. Pacific time. So a, um, a QuickBooks point of sale customer that's been very vocal. So I'm sure you've seen a basis loaded kind of around. Um, and we have, dozens of written and video case studies as well as referenceable clients so if you ever have a customer that wants to chat with someone in the same industry as them and just get um, some feedback from an outsider i'm happy to connect that with you for you so this is the exciting screen <laughs> so i save it for the end um 
As a certified partner, we know that you're opening up your book of business to us and that that this. Um, I pay out 20% of recurring revenue for the life of an account. So if you close an account that pays $100 a month, you get $20 a month um, as long as they're with us. Those payouts happen quarterly from Bill.com. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Bill.com, but if you don't have an account with them already, that first payment will include a link to sign up. Um, and then there's about a one month delay on the payouts. So payouts for this quarter, for example, that ends in June, I'll be sending them out on about mid-July. Did anyone have any questions on that? I tried to kind of buzz through it. I think you got a, a little bit of a, um, as someone that uh, is looking forward to setting them up as a as a partner they just set up a new client so yes <laughs> they have some <laughs> they have well, some uh, logistic questions <laughs> yeah and i just wanted to to kind of reemphasize or clarify it comes up you know are you all there to help the pro advisors like if i have a question i've encountered a problem and i don't know how to fix it or i don't know how to set this up or set that up are you all available for ongoing support for us and for our clients and kind of is that included or is that a separate fee or how does that work that's included so all of our partners will be assigned to a channel sales exam. Because, you know, it is daunting. And like Dan said earlier, you know, wow, my head's exploding. It, it's, it seems kind of scary or whatever, but I love that we're not alone. So if this is an area that I want to get into, I don't have to learn it all by myself. You know, I've got you all there to help me and to help my clients and to help it be a success. Um, so I, it just really seems like a win-win and helps alleviate any of that fear and anxiety of getting into this because you know you've got that support and resources available for us. So I think that's awesome. Absolutely. And we're excited to help you out. Well, like I said at the beginning, for some of you that came in, you're not interested in that time, that's uh, at this time, that's okay too. Just let us know kind of where you stand on that. And I know we didn't get to all of the questions that people asked. Um, um, so if you want WebGility to follow up with you, just let us know and uh, put your email in there and things like that. Um, so I think that's great. And somebody says, uh, I think this is awesome. So I was going to share it with you all. Uh, Z says, thank you for this. 23 minutes into this webinar, I was emailing one of my clients about WebGility. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that because that's such the case. These clients may have started. I like to hear that. Oop. Do, does it, and some people ask this, this question, does it work with uh, global versions of, of QuickBooks Online or is it only US or is it um, Very good question. Specific? Yeah, we, uh, which we then, did which actually- Which then leads to um, like multi-currency and things like that. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, and that's uh, something I didn't touch on, you know, as you can tell, I was trying my hardest to get through uh, quite a bit of information and there's so much more, <laughs> uh, but yes, that's one of those things that's in the so much more is we absolutely support multi-currency for, you know, sort of uh, pretty much any country that you can expect or think of there. As far as versions of QuickBooks, we support all of the, uh, the us or sorry the us the english speaking uh versions of quickbooks so uh we've added the support for uh quickbooks canada um quickbooks uk and quickbooks australia yes uh, and for those of you that that like me were 20 minutes in just overwhelmed with <laughs> with just the tip of the iceberg uh yeah we'll have the the recording of this uh by the end of the day uh, on a, hey, wanna just watch it again <laughs> and, and funnel those questions that weren't answered. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cause you guys really, I, unfortunately, you know, in the short amount of time we have, you really just like the said, touch the top of the, the, just briefly. And it's just amazing how powerful it is and what a great what, uh, app it is um, for the e-commerce area. Thanks. So we are. Uh, was there anything else you guys needed to to share before we before we close out? Because we are at the the top of the hour. Some people may need to to log off. Uh, it's certainly fine. But uh, if you guys, I'm happy to answer some questions or anything. Okay. I wanted to. Um, I think Linda had a question really quick. I wanted to address. It's okay if you don't currently have a Bill.com account for receiving payments from us. 
um, that during that first commission. The, there was a question just about the the import process within Webgility. Um, to clarify the all of the sales channel, if you want to do much faster syncing on the lower plans, it's typically a daily sync. If you're if you're thinking about email address, um, maybe in the chat there, and yeah. also people are loving on your chair. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty great chair. It's pretty comfy. And then Erica, I know you mentioned that um, you help people learn, you know, how to sell it and things like that. So Kimberly would like to know, do we get a test file for demos, like for future sales? So if we're talking to clients and stuff, do you have a practice or a demo file that people use where they can show their clients how it would work? I can get you guys set up with your own demo account. Um, the one thing that I can't get you, of course, would be a demo account for QuickBooks or a sales channel. Um, I have some a, a demo account for QuickBooks. What people can do actually, if they're using QBO, let's say, go set up a free 30 day trial at QuickBooks that you could hook up with the Webgility testing or just set up a free QBO subscription to use with the sample company from Webgility. So yeah, that's a way people could do some of that testing. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, yeah, I want to, I think we will just, um, uh, <laughs> come in off of that. I mean, that, <laughs> close it out with that. I mean, you can always reach out um, to to Erica at, at, at Webgility and just start the conversation. Um, because again, I think what we talked about here today was just a tip <laughs> of, of the ocean that you could find yourself uh, almost drowning right. into. But it, I think it's great that uh, you guys at Webgility already have the, the, the knowledge, the resources, and the system in place to, to throw somebody a life raft. <laughs> uh, right. So and I, definitely. I would just like to remind people too. go, go to webgility.com and you're in this webinar and the slides have links to the niche nuances that we did on e-commerce to the point of sale that we did with Will English and niche nuance to the Avalara webinar we did talking about sales taxes and e-commerce um, in, in addition to this. Um, so lots of great resources out there for those of you that want to delve into this and, and learn more and start specializing in this area. Well, thank you all for joining us today, Erica and Colin. Great demo uh, and great information. You know, you may need to come back just to re-explain some of these <laughs> things. <laughs> Sounds That's good. That's right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. All right. You guys have a great day.